Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, good morning. Happy Tuesday. May the Lord bless you and do you good in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Good morning, good morning. Yes, somebody go ahead and share this message. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Good morning, New York. Jesus. Yes, go ahead and share. Welcome to breakfast with Jesus. Welcome, my God. Welcome to breakfast. Welcome to breakfast with Jesus. Glory be to God. It is such a great thing to serve God. Yes, it is a new day. We are in the land of the living. You are alive. Give God praise. You are alive. Give him glory. You are alive. It could have been otherwise. A lot of people didn't make it. A lot of people did not make it to this point. So let us praise God. Amen. Let us praise Almighty God for His goodness and His mercies. A lot of people did not make it to this point that we are at. So let us thank God for what He is doing in our midst. Amen. If you don't believe me, go down to the hospital and you will understand. Go down to the morgue and you will understand the new, the, all the new bodies that they brought in. Go down to the hospital. Look at the accident rate since the beginning of this month. And then you'll begin to thank God for where you are. Amen. You will begin to thank God for his goodness and his mercies. Where you are, it's noisy. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us give God glory. Let us give him praise. Let us lift his name on high. He is high and lifted up. He is high and exalted and there is none like him. Let us praise God this morning. I don't care what you are going through. Just forget about what you are going through. And take this moment to give him all that he deserves. Honor him. Adore him. Lift him on high. My God, he has been good unto you. Some people wish they were in your position. You might be complaining because things don't look right. Things don't sound right. Things are not going right. But I'm here to let you know there's always someone that desire the life that you have. So thank God for where you are. There was a time in your life when you desire this moment. There was a time in your life when you desire to be where you are today. So I encourage you to give God praise. He did it. It doesn't matter how small the blessing is. Thank God for the blessing. 
Don't wait for big things to happen before you begin to praise God. Don't wait, yes, don't wait for a lot of things to start rolling in before you acknowledge God in your life. My God, you are alive. For the fact that you are alive, give him praise. I'm so thankful. He has kept me this far. I don't know about you, but I, I can move my arms. Yes, I can move both my legs. And I'm thankful. Why? Somebody's laying in the hospital bed right now waiting for someone to come and lift their leg so they can move. Someone is waiting for somebody to come and give them what they call it, range of motion or physical therapy so they can feel like they that part of their body is not dead. So thank God for the least things that you you can do on your own. Oh Jesus, don't wait for something bad to happen before you begin to thank him. Acknowledge God in the little things that he's doing in your life. Acknowledge him. There are people out there fasting and praying for what you have. Somebody is saying, I need to go to, to Canada, but I need a visa. You might be in Canada and you don't have a job. Thank God for where you are. Somebody is fasting and praying for to be where you are. You might be in a relationship and things are not going well. Thank God for your relationship. Why? Because there are some people that are single that desire to be in a relationship. Praise God for everything. Give thanks to God. The Bible said in all things, give thanks to God. Don't wait for big things to come to you before you... Oh, Jesus, I feel like preaching. Hey, Baba Koshaya, I feel like preaching. Be grateful. Have an attitude of gratitude. Don't wait until you see a lump sum of money before you begin to thank God for what you have. Open your mouth and praise God. Don't wait until somebody give you stuff for you to know that Jesus is with you. My God, many of us, it doesn't matter what we have. It doesn't matter what we have. It's not enough. It's time for us to be grateful. Oh, God Almighty. It's time for us to be grateful. Be grateful. The Bible said, be thankful unto him and bless his name because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. I'm thankful today that I'm able to come outside to preach, to talk to you. Why? Oh, my God. The allergy is so bad. The pollen in this season is so bad. So I was driving down the street and I remember this park and I stopped here today and I thank God it's not so bad. They were cutting the grass, but you know, I'm thanking God that I can stand here to be here in the spirit to give you what God wants you to have. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Some of you are in England. Some of you are in America. You might not even have your citizenship. You might not even have um, proper documentation to work. But listen to this. There are some people in some islands and different parts of the world that desire to be where you are. Hello. Thank God. You see, these are the little nuggets that we need to appreciate. There are people living in foreign countries and they got great jobs. They got big houses and they are trying their best to come to where you are. Some will even sell what they have to come to United States, to go to England, to go to Canada, to go to Germany, to go to Greece. Yes. So if you are in any of these places and nothing good is happening for you, thank God, because people will give up everything just to be, oh God Almighty. Jesus. There are people that will give up everything that they possess just to be where you are. So thank, be thankful. It's true. It is true. Some people have great jobs. They're married. But you are in a foreign country and you're single and you're complaining. Somebody who is sorted out properly in a different land that desire the life that you have. Oh yes. If you don't believe me. Go and Google. And look how many people. Have been charged for fraudulent. Fraud documents that they are trying to use to enter. 
foreign countries and get caught. Thank God for where you are. Stop complaining. Stop whining. God knows best. Even if things are not working out right now, he knows what's best for you. So be obedient to him. People are dying to have the life that you have. And you are over there complaining. Do you know some people that they wish to spend a day in your shoes? Just one day. The same thing that you keep complaining about. The same thing that you keep on having regrets. I'm sorry. Hey, remember somebody is saving up their money to come to live the same life that you are living in regrets. Oh, Jesus. What am I talking about? Be grateful. Be thankful. You might desire to drive a new car, but the one that you have is raggedy. Thank God for your raggedy car. Thank God. You might desire to take a vacation and people around you are taking vacation. Thank God that your day is coming. If they can go one day, your day will come. Be thankful for everything. You might be living in a mess. Thank God for your mess. One day your mess will be a message. One day your mess will be a decent message. Will be a great book. Thank God for your current situation. And not everything the world needs to know. People really don't care. Oh Jesus. Not everything that you tell people. Not everyone. Is concerned about your well-being. People just want to know things to have one upon you. Stop telling everybody everything. I'm telling you this here today. Some people only want to have one upon you. So when you climb up to the next level, they remember, remind you of, remember when you were down. Remember when you couldn't do this and I had to do it for you. So stop telling everybody everything. Amen. It's not that serious. My brothers and my sisters, welcome. Good morning. It is true. I'm not going around in circles. And I'm not using any big words to confuse you. God wants you to humble yourself and wait on him. Hallelujah. God wants you to wait upon him. The Bible said, wait upon the Lord and be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. So while you're going through your hardship, everybody don't need to know. Just pray and wait. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to, but today is day number nine. Number nine of our fasting. What does nine mean? Hallelujah. Jesus. Seven is completion. Eight is new beginning. What does nine mean? People of God, listen, it's time for you to know your position. Know where you are. And acknowledge your, 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 your status. God, don't be envious of anything that anyone is going through. Sometimes, you know the things that you envy people for? It could be detrimental to you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The things that many times we envy other people for, it might not be for us. It might not be good for us. It might be there to destroy us. So whatever is good for the goose is not good for the gander. Be thankful for what you have. If, if you just take a moment sometime and look around you and see your blessings, just sit back and relax and say, God, you know, I thank you. There was a woman that was about to, to, to backslide. She said, I'm done. I can't bother with God anymore. And, you know, the Lord began to speak to her and say, woman, count your blessing. And she began to remember when she was in the hospital and she got healed from different sickness and disease. She remember when there was a time nothing was happening and God saved her. She remember she was saved from accident. She, re she remember she was saved from premature death. She remember her children mighty God human said no by the time she finished counting her blessings name them one by one then she will be she was surprised to see what God did in her life so today I just want you to know
Just, just, just do a little bit of observation. Yeah. And, and see how far you came. And see how good you have it. Many of us, we don't realize how good we have it until it's taken away from us. Oh, Jesus. Many of us, we don't realize how good it is until the rug have been pulled from under our feet. God have a lampstand that he gave to every one of us. And he's saying, be careful. I will remove your lampstand. Be obedient. Oh, Jesus. I just want that to sink in a little bit. He have a lampstand. You see, a lot of people don't want to hear this kind of message. It's time to work on yourself. Work out, your, work out things. Stop worrying about what everyone else is doing. It's time to re-evaluate. Oh, Jesus. It's time to look around you and see how blessed you are. Instead of complaining and whining and living in regrets. It's time to sit down and look at what God has done for you. How far you came. Look at your children if you are a parent. And look how far he brought you. Look where he brought you from. It's time to, yes, take a stock. They call it self-care. Love yourself. It's time to start. You see, you might not, this message might not even be for you. It might be for somebody else that you know. So, with all due respect, I encourage you to share it. Good morning and welcome to breakfast. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you might lost, you, you, you lost something that is precious to you and you, you keep on wondering, how come I lose this? God will never take something from you without replacing it. The Bible said when Cain killed Abel, nobody was there to worship God because Abel loved the Lord. But then after that, God get rid of Cain and he allowed Adam and Eve to make another child. And that's when God starting to get glory again. So I'm here to let you know, God will never remove something out of your life and don't replace it. Be thankful. Sometimes God have to really move some things out of our life because he tell us to let it go and we're still holding on to it. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's time for us to wake up. Some people will be angry at you. Because God separated from them. God allowed some deep things to be revealed. So some people can disappear out of your life. Stop chasing them. God allowed some, some, some demons to, to, to manifest. <laughs> I'm laughing but it's true. God allowed some demons to manifest. And you realize. Is that this man was nothing but the devil from hell. Sometimes God allows some woman with their demons to manifest and you realize that woman was never there for you in the first place. They were an assignment from the devil. Some people come to your life and they are an assignment from hell to kill you. Some friendship. Huh. If you could only see what's really happening behind the scenes, you would be quiet. Some people that we call friends, sometimes if we only could see, but the Bible said, who can see the heart? The heart of man is deceitful and wicked. Who can know it? There are some things that we need to understand what God is doing in this time. We need to chill. We need to really chill and let it flow because God is sweeping clean and giving us brand new start. But we are stretching, doing everything we can do just to chase down the past. Stop it. God will never take something from you and don't replenish you. Somebody open your mouth and declare, oh Lord, replenish me now. Give me, oh God, what you desire for me. Not what I desire, but what you desire. Let your will be done. My God, the Bible said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
that means there's a little bit of heaven on earth for us to experience before before we go remember this is why some people said heaven is on earth no but thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven hello so god will give us some blessings so we can relax open him out and declare thy will be done upon my life today yes Stop worrying about what left you. Stop worrying about what they take from you. Stop worrying about what you have lost. Mighty God, prepare for what's to come. God is working it out for your good. Jesus is working it out for your good. Some, some of you are so angry because mother's dear came and that person didn't call you. Forget about them. Look how many people call your mother's dear. If nobody didn't call your Mother's Day to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Today I'm here. Pastor Joycelyn Radigan is about to tell you. Happy belated Mother's Day. And may next year and every year after that be the best Mother's Day you will enjoy. Sometimes some of us really need to spend Mother's Day alone. Because the kind of people that we know, mighty God, they are torn in our flesh. They never appreciate our friendship. They never appreciate our companionship. We have to leave them alone. I'm talking to some women. Some of us, we are going around looking for people to validate us. God already validate you. Jesus Christ. God already validate you. Stop going around looking for approval from people who don't have the opportunity. Who God already moved. Many of us are looking... Jesus Christ, I pray this morning that every blind will be able to see. And when I say blind will be able to see, I mean you will be able to discern beyond the physical. It's true. Many of you, God, move some people from your life. And you're waiting for them to wish you a happy birthday. Why? God, move them. They can't call you. It's not because they don't have your number, but God destroyed that relationship. Many of you are waiting for certain people every year that person send me a text. Hey, you need to stop it. You need to let it go. You need to move on. When God closed doors, how in the world will he open a new door if you're still knocking on that old lock? up all padlock god place pad oh jesus christ god place padlock upon some doors and you are looking for chainsaw to open them why god place chain padlock some whole rusty padlock on some doors and you are going around looking for the latest model of chainsaw trying to spend your money to invest in a chainsaw to open a door that God already closed leave it alone not everybody was meant to be into your future it don't mean because some people know you when you were broke some people know you when you were hungry some people know you when you were desperate when you are in, when you're in your nothingness, in your in your nothingness season, that does not mean that God placed them there to follow you into your future. Many of them were the ones that were holding you back. Many of them were the ones that had your finger behind the trigger. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to today, but it's time for you to let go and move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Stop talking about the past. Gone are those days. God already deal with some things for you. You should have been glad that God moved some people out of your past. You would have died already if God never moved them. Because you refused to let them go. You get dreams. You see them and stab you in your back. You still hold on. Come on, people of God, wake up. When we are grown, we don't do childish things anymore. 
Paul said, when I was a child, I act like a child. I do things that are childish, but know that I am a man. That's what Paul said. I no longer do those things. Stop hold on to the things of the past. If you go to Jeremiah, he will tell you, don't look back. Gone are those days. Philippians said, be careful for nothing. Go straight with Jesus. Yes, you don't know what tomorrow holds, but you know you have history with that person that let you go. Hold on. Who, who, who brought that person in the first place? And they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So now it's time for you to move forward. Move forward. You know how many people dismiss me? You know how many friends stab me in my back? Some they lose the knife before they were about to stab me. God grabbed the hand. Remember there was a prophet, mighty God. And when he went to the king, Jesus Christ, and told the king, he said, Man, I'm going to curse this altar that you worship on because it's a dirty altar. And when he lifted his hand to slap the prophet, his hand was frozen. God froze some hands that were coming after you. But because you're blind and you couldn't see it, mighty God, God moved some people because they were about to kill you. And all of a sudden, now you're looking for them. Why? Why? The Bible never lie. Never lie. Never a day in the Bible was a lie told. God don't lie. God, according to the book of Numbers, it reminds us that God is not a man that he should lie. God is a spirit. He's not a real man. He will show up in man and manifest himself. But God can't lie. When people come and lie to you, it's not of God. God don't lie. So when they come, I will, you know, earlier I was taking a shower. And while I was in the show, I began to pray. And God began to, to speak to me. God began to speak to me. No one will ever be able to call me a liar. If I used to lie before I came to Christ, that's it. Those days are gone. My chains are gone. I've been set free. Yes, my God rescue me. So when people lie to you and they continue to lie to you, what is that telling you? God don't lie. God didn't send nobody to lie to Oh, Jesus. I would rather you hear me for the truth. Hello? I would rather I speak the truth and you despise El Shaddai prayer tower than you are in it because I can you. I am a con artist. No, I'm not. I refuse to build on lie because that's not a solid foundation. So here we are today. If you have people lying to you and they said you are the best friend the best girl the best boy and god sent them no god didn't send nobody to lie to you god will tell people to tell you you're lying he will tell people to come to you in truth but he will not send a con artist to your life he will because that is to destroy you to deceive you it's like a wolf in sheep clothed Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you have been. But I came today to tell you whatever they lied to you about. Let it go. Move on. Don't try to fix it. You're not a mechanic. You know, I always tell people, my name is not Pastor Feelgood. I'm not a mechanic. I don't know how to fix anything. Yes, I used to try to fix, work on some people to fix them. But they fail me. Why? It's not my place to fix anybody. If you are broken and you need to hear the truth, come to Jesus Christ. You will be hey, sorted out. But we don't lie. 
the things that we did when we were in sin. We dibble dabble in some things that we are not proud of. No, we don't go there anymore. We bind that spirit and we move forward. People of God, it's time to move forward in the truth. You want to hear the truth. Many of you don't know how to even know the truth. I pray the Lord open your eyes. The Bible tells us to test our spirit. When many of us hear people talking the truth, we don't want to hear it. We want them to continue to lie to us because we were raised up being lied to. No. Gone are those days. God is raising up a new generation that is not afraid to chop up things in the spirit, to tear down some things. Hey, my God, my God, my God. Jesus. I can tell you one thing. Tell your children the truth. Tell your husband the truth. If you're a man and you are honest, it's time for you to start telling your wife the truth. Stop lying to people. God is showing people things in visions. We don't need Moses no more to mediate for us. God is talking to us directly. So begin to speak the truth. Tell your boss the truth. Tell your staff the truth. You have people working under you. Tell them the truth. You don't know how powerful that makes you. Once you begin to speak the truth, people will be afraid of you. Many of us, when we speak and we lie, we realize that it's deception. So we have to become a bigger liar because every day you have to add one lie on that old lie. Thief and liars wear the same shoes because some people have to lie to you in order to rob you. I pray today that every lying spirit that come near you will be exposed. My God, every deceptive spirit spirit those who are planning to rob you i pray that god open your eyes to see them in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i pray every jesus somebody bless the lord you talk about many of you talk about you know i i, I how could you love somebody who is lying to you when a person lies to you, they are stealing from you. They are stealing your peace. When a person, you know, this is why some people, you know, they they dead and gone. And there are people that are alive, are still angry at them. God didn't show you. But there were times when he tried to show you. But you ignore it, talking about in the name of love. In the name of what? That's not love. You cannot love somebody who constantly lied to you. Leave them alone. Leave people alone once they start to lie to you. Somebody go ahead and share this message. You know, I'm here today and I'm sharing this because there are some of you here that are living a life of a liar. And once your eyes are open, all hell is going to break loose. You will remember this message. If somebody really loves you, they won't lie to you. And if you truly love someone who is lying to you, and God knows that this is not good for you, God will allow this person to leave. Excuse me. God will move them out of your way. Be thankful. You see, many of us, that is the problem. We get, we, we get caught up. Many of us got caught up. Why? We see something and it looked good. God didn't give it to us. We saw someone else with it and it looked good and we want it. Be careful. Sometimes our desires, our desires lead us in sin. Tell God, Lord, if this is what you want for me. Lord, let your will be done in my life so you can get glory. We were created for his glory. Hello? Hello? Hello, he said he created us to glorify him. So the things that many of us, God has, God has been so good and he blessed us and we never said, God, thank you. We talk about, it's the way I shape. It's my education. It's my looks. Let me tell you something. The arms of flesh will fail. All that good looks one day will fade. Hello. 
So please, as of today, be thankful for where you are in life. As of today, thank God for how far he brought you. As of today, thank God for the people that he surround you. Many of you, your circle is so wide. You don't know the truth anymore. Because there are so many different people that you have to relate to, to report to, to tell other people. Hey, some of them, they don't want friendship from you. They have you as a contact to tell them other people's business. So be careful of the report that you bring back to some people that you call friends. Be careful of people's expectations from you. Hey. Hello. Be careful. Some people only want you in their life just to report. You, you become a news reporter. And once you finish, get, give the report. They don't want to hear nothing more. It's not a friendship. You are the only one in the friendship. Mighty God. And this is when we pray. Hello? This is when we open our mouth and begin to pray. Many of you, you know, they did you so bad. You don't even know night from day. <laughs> It's true. We're going to continue. Yes. Yesterday, I, you know, I declare many of us need to pray that God will reveal to us the things that's blocking us. Amen. We were asking God yesterday for the spirit of revelation and wisdom and knowledge of him. Ask God to reveal himself to you. Ask God. Hallelujah. Ask God to reveal himself to you. Many of you have been fasting and praying and you're not getting any results. Jesus said something. He said, you know, you have been fasting and praying. Until today, you have not asked me for anything because you have not asked for it in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. So today, we will pray. Many of you desire to discern, you desire to prophesy. Today we will pray and ask God to let the spirit of prophecy and revelation to fall upon us afresh. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God, let the spirit of, yes, of prophecy and revelation pray to fall upon us right now, oh God. You see, this is the reason why people become, people use us because we, we became gullible. Why? Because we, we knew some people and because of their looks and their, their, their status, we became close to them and they, they step on us. They, they crush us. I don't know if any one of you have ever had a friend with money and because they think they are better than you, you became a reporter. They want you to tell them what's going on in other people's life. Why? They don't really don't need you. They just need a report. So now we're going to thank God for social media. We don't longer have to be anybody's reporter. We no longer have to be anybody's fool. Some people really don't want friendship from you. They want to know what's going on in the ministry, in other people's life. To make them look good. You know what I tell you? They have issues. Hey, Jesus. But today we bind that demon that pollute friendship. Oh, Jesus. Today we bind that demon that pollute our spiritual vision. Many of you were able to see. And once you, you became close to some individuals, you don't even get good dreams anymore. Today we bind any spirit that pollute visions. In the name of Jesus Christ. Many of you, everything was going well until you, you, you decided to take a room here. To Lord Jesus. Hey, ma, ba, 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 koshaya. Many of you were doing well until you decided to live with a certain relative. Mighty God, their spirit contaminates your whole house. You cannot, you don't even prophesy anymore. You don't even dream anymore. God don't reveal nothing to you because they came with that spirit to pollute you and your house. But today, 
we bind up that spirit of pollution in the name of Jesus Christ today we're buying it up many of you when you were when you were doing well in life and before you get into that relationship everything you were spiritually connected and this person came with that cantankerous spirit you don't even know how to praise God so today we bind that spirit that the enemy sent to pollute your home to pollute your life in the name of Jesus Christ. It's true. It's true. Many of you, if I were closer, you would want to shake my hand this morning. But you don't have to shake my hand. Just thank God for the word. Thank God for what he's saying. You see, it's not every day you say hallelujah. Some day you have to say, devil, get behind me. Oh, Jesus. Many of us, because of money, we can't even pray. We take that job and we can't even worship God. We don't even take a lunch break. We're just busy competing with everybody else on the job trying to get that extra hour. Stop it. God will provide. Do your part and go home and worship your God. Stop competing with Satan. You, can, you see, good don't mingle with evil. Stop it. And I'm going to stop right here. Today we pray against every spirit that was set out to pollute. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any spirit that the enemy assigned to your life to pollute, to destroy, to distract. Mighty God to rob you. Today we bind it up in the name of Jesus. And we speak with no apologies. When the enemy is taken from you, all you know, you look in your account and you see nothing. There's no one to talk to. Why? Because the devil already set you up to fail. And no bad things begin to happen. What are you going to do? And so, yes, Sister Marva, welcome. God bless you. Not every friendship was designed by God. And this is why some people came to your life short term. They can't steer the assignment wrong. Their spirit is not right. David said, give me the right spirit, God. So it means that some people have the wrong spirit. Creating me a clean heart and renew. So you see, sometimes we need to turn around out of some things for renewal. The spirit needs to be renewed. The right spirit needs to come. Oh God Almighty. Jesus. The right spirit need to come. Many of us, they contaminate us. So today we pray against any spirit that was set forth to pollute your house. Sometimes it's just one visit. Some people have to visit your house one time and they rob you your peace. Things start to show up missing all of a sudden. Why? Many of us, we choose people. We don't allow God to send people. We choose them because they look good. We choose them because they have connection. Wait on the Lord. The right connection will come. Wait on God. God will connect you to the right people. And when you show up, they'll be asking you, where have you been? So when God align you, when you are in alignment for your assignment and the thing begins to, mighty God, when opportunity, yes, present itself with preparation, that's when miracle begin to happen because you have been prepared and the opportunity show up and you just walk into what God has for you. Don't choose people because of who they are. Wait on the Lord. Not everybody's going to receive you, anyhow. Wait on God. Not everybody will receive you. Some will reject you. It's okay to be rejected. Rejection is good. Rejection is good. When God rejects Saul, then David was able to enter into his calling. So sometimes rejection is good. 
when they didn't choose you or your friend it's a blessing there is a door waiting to be opened for you but you are using that whole chainsaw to muscle your way to pull the padlock have some doors where god already closed mighty god somebody need deliverance and this is why I invite you. We will be in Jamaica the last weekend of this month, the 26th, 27th, 28th of May. Amen. And what is it called? Flaming fire. Flaming fire. El Shaddai prayer to present flaming fire in Old Arbor Bay, Jamaica. Oh God, we are doing our best to get this thing advertised because God, mighty God, he will move like no other. Hello, somebody. Yes. Yes. We're not going to compromise the word of God. Whatever God said, so shall it be. So shall it be whatever God said. Ladies and gentlemen, my time is up. It's a lot of pollen and they are cutting the grass. So I don't want it to affect my allergies. <laughs> Mighty God, continue to pray my strength. This morning when I was getting out of the bathroom i hear the lord said pray against this this season it's a season pray against the allergy season yes it prevents me from bringing forth the word of god in favorable places because of the pollen so today i declare if the lord touch your heart to be a blessing to the ministry we will be traveling. We are, we're going to have to rent chairs, rent tables, rent podium to put in our own building. Yes, we're building the church. So if God touch your heart to be a blessing to us, to help out while we are there, may the Lord bless you whatever you give. May the Lord double it up and give it back to you. You can use Zelle, PayPal, or Cash App. And if you choose to write a check, write the check in. You can just write El Shaddai on the check. The ministry is El Shaddai Prayer International Inc. Amen. So may the Lord bless you. The number is 860-634-8557. I'm thrilled to, to, to travel back to where the country that I was born in to bring forth the word of God, to do a baptism. My God, I'm here to let you know Jesus said, he said, no prophet is honored in their country. So I'm thrilled to go back there to speak about Jesus Christ. Not man problem, not woman problem, but Jesus Christ. Paul said, if you want to brag, brag about Jesus Christ. Amen. So without further ado, my time is up. I have to go. May the Lord bless your heart and touch each and every one of you that was touched by this message. I encourage you to share it. I see Sister Marva Providence watching with us and I thank God for her life and her ministry. People of God, listen, this has been Breakfast with Jesus. My name is Pastor Joyce Radigan. Have yourself a blessed day. Amen. God bless you all.